Hey folks, Chris here with the Crabapple Cottage sharing with you a thrift store prepping and homesteading haul. So over the last few days, I visited several thrift stores, a number of Goodwills, maybe three or four different Goodwills, um, some religious based thrift stores and a Salvation, sorry, Salvation Army and a Habitat for Humanity Restore. If you're not familiar with Habitat for Humanity Restores, they sell um, building supplies, um, appliances, furniture, stuff like that. So all stuff that people, let's say somebody is doing a remodeling project and they use, they needed a roll of insulation, but they had half a roll done when they finished their project, or left when they finished their project, you would take that half roll of insulation to um, the restore and you, you know, there it is. So they have things like paint, tools. Uh, I've gotten a lot of furniture there. I've also gotten some various building materials. They have things like nuts and screws and door hardware, all gently used or leftovers from projects. So if you just need a small bit of something for a project, it's a great place to go. But they also have a lot of great tools. So I um, went to the restore. So anyways, let's start with um, what I got at my thrift stores. We're gonna start with books. So I always look at books when I go to thrift stores. Um, I'm not a huge fiction reader. I do read some fiction, historical fiction, but I'm a researcher, a historian by training. So I get a lot of history books, um, archaeology books, because I'm also an archaeologist. But I also look for practical books to build my prepper library. As I've mentioned in other videos, you need to have a solid prepper homesteader library. Uh, don't rely on electronic sources of knowledge because those may not be available in, in a grid down situation or if you don't have power for some other reason. So I have a pretty extensive library. Actually, you can see some in the back, uh, a lot of history books and architecture books as well. But this is what I have picked up. And most of these are books that I picked up in the last few days. But I did throw a couple other ones in here that I picked up at thrift stores um, a few months ago just because I wanted to show them off. So as I talk about in another video, I am trying to learn how to knit. Um, and also crochet. I picked up some crochet needles too. So I picked up a few books, Learn to Knit and um, Basics Knitting and Crocheting. Um, you know, they're nice picture books. Sorry, that's not a really good picture. They have pictures in them. So just trying to learn knitting. It's it's actually a lot harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> they make it look so easy, little old ladies knitting. Well, not just little old ladies, but um, it just seems like one of those things that would be kind of fun to do while I'm watching television or videos, but it's a lot harder <laughs> than I thought. But I'm going to keep at it. So along those lines, um, if you are a sewer, you could pick up books or you're trying to learn how to sew, you could pick up books on sewing or other crafts that are useful. I do have a book in my prepper library on basket making. Um, you know, not a skill that I would probably use every day, but who knows? It might be something that might be in handy. On that note, sorry, because that. I have been buying knitting needles at thrift stores and um, I did pick up this pair of number seven knitting needles for $1.99. Um, most of my knitting, actually all of my knitting needles have come from thrift stores. Let me grab it real quick, sorry. So this is my jar of knitting needles and I actually think knitting needles are really beautiful. I like things that are both practical and beautiful. Um, so I've been picking up various sizes of knitting needles and they have this, you know, this pretty colored aluminum <laughs> and I just like color. Um, so I think they kind of look cool in a jar. I may get a vase for them, but I've been picking them up usually for a dollar a pair. Um, sometimes they're bundled together. So I might get a couple of pairs for a buck 50, something like that. So that's something I've been stocking up on. All right, back to the books. So this is my cat, by the way. This is Iris. She's into everything. Okay, so you can also find books on um, medical books. This was a book that I picked up actually today, Emergency Victim Care. It's an EMT book. Now, this book is old. It's, I think, 1979. But, uh, as I have mentioned in another video, I have very limited medical skills. And uh, there are still going to be things in this book that I can learn. And for 99 cents... You know, you can't beat it. Places, where to place a tourniquet, things like that. Um, how to give chest compressions. I mean, I've taken a first aid, a couple first aid courses. Uh, it never seems to stick in my mind. So uh, this is something that I need to review and keep reviewing various medical literature and practicing it until I get it down. Another type of medical book that I, and these, these three books I'm getting ready to show you, two or three books, 
I've actually um, purchased, like I said, a couple of months ago, but I think they're super useful, so I just wanted to show you. And they were like a buck ninety nine each. So the first one is the pill book. Um, this basically tells you know it tells you the name of a, a medication what it's used for cautions and warnings side effects that sort of thing now this is useful in a situation where um maybe you have access to you find medications let's say you're raiding another person's home and no longer lives there they're deceased or something like that or you're going into a pharmacy to get medications and maybe you don't know specifically what types of medications you're looking for or you just grab what you find and then figure it out later um that's kind of how i imagine it would work in my world <laughs> i don't know if that's really practical or not but this book um you know you can look up if, you, if there's a prescription that says what it is you can look it up and it'll tell you what it's used for. So once again, if you're trying to build um, a prepper medical library or building up your supplies, um, knowing what different types of pills are for. And you know, it even has, um, in it, it has actually colored photos of some of the medication. And I looked up some of the medication that I actually take to see if it was updated and it matched and it was pretty accurate. So this book is a little outdated and I, I think I actually, this is the second time I purchased this book. I think I purchased an older version and then I found this version, the 10th edition, so I purchased this one. This one is 2002, so 20 years old. Um, so, you know, you gotta be careful with that. It's not gonna have some of the newer medications, but it's gonna be a nice place to start. And for a buck 99, it's something good to have in your library. The other medical book that I picked up recently is Mosby's or Mosby, I think Mosby's Pocket Dictionary of Medicine, Nursing, and Health Problem Professions. So again, it's just a dictionary of medical terms, but sometimes you might come across a term in a book you're reading. Like I have a number of books on um, first aid, but also on traditional medicine, like herbal healing and that sort of, sort of thing. And sometimes they use words that maybe I'm not super familiar with what it means. So this is a really good way to um, look up those medical terms that you may encounter if you're trying to teach yourself medical skills and it'll tell you what it is. So just kind of a handy little book to have in your medical library. Okay, what else have I found? Oh, speaking of healing, I did find this book a couple of weeks ago, The Illustrated Encyclopedia of Healing Remedies. And I don't remember how much this book was, but it wasn't much, a couple of bucks. Um, again, really great. Shows you, you know, has lots of color pictures. Shows you, like, so for this one is aloe vera, uses for it, garlic. Um, it also has some Eastern medicine practices in here. Um, walnuts, flaxseed, marigold flowers. So, um all kinds of different things. And then in the back, I believe there's an area, or maybe it's in the front where you can look up a particular type of thing. Let's say you're having urinary tract problems. You can look it up and it'll give you all the different types of treatments, um, healing remedies that are out there for urinary tract infections or something like that. So I've got actually a number of herbal books, herbal remedies on my Prepper Library bookshelf. I also found this book. The Wild Flavor, Delectable Wild Foods to be Found in Field and Forest and Cooked in Country Kitchens. Pretty cool. So this goes over some of the, you know, pretty common foraged foods. It goes by seasons so of like winter foods, spring foods, that sort of thing. Uh, and then it gives you recipes for them as well as, you know, includes pictures. So I'm trying to think here, you know, like persimmons, wild apples, uh, pawpaws, wild blueberries, um, yeah, wild strawberries, that's all in the summer, that's why it sounds like that. Spring greens, dandelion greens, sheep sorrel, wood sorrel, uh, plantain, things like that. So not only just, you know, useful for um, learning about wild edibles, but also it gives you recipes for what to do with those. Pretty cool. I also found this. Dressing and cooking wild game. Um, I'm not a hunter. I actually want to learn to hunt, which is something I never thought I would say growing up. But um, I do want to learn how to, I, I don't think I can handle anything big like a deer at this point, but I would like to learn how to hunt smaller game and how to butcher. So, you know, good tips like here's how to butcher. I think this is a rabbit. It just says smaller game but something like a rabbit, you know, super useful. If you were to catch, or trap a rabbit, shoot a rabbit, and you don't know what to do with it, I mean, you probably could stumble through it, um, but it gives you some, you know, here's 
fowl, waterfowl, upland water, uh, sorry, upland for waterfowl. My hunting skills are very basic. Uh, big game recipes. So not just um, how to cut and dress the meat, but also recipes. So just a useful thing to have on my bookshelf. I also picked up this, the tree identification book. This was an older book, but it was only 69 cents. Uh, so, you know, for 69 cents, it's good to have a book that shows you some basic tree stuff. Now, this one has, for example, uh, you know, various acorns. And I actually do make my own acorn flower. Um, and so it's, you know, it's good to be able to identify trees by their acorns. And here's other, other types of nuts. I also collect um, butternuts and black walnuts and hickory nuts and process those. So pretty useful for identifying different types of trees. Here's one where it identifies trees by pine cone type. So instead of going, you know, just each type of tree separately, it gives you an overview of various things like the needles or here's one for the bark. So you can try to identify a tree. And this is a good resource for foraging, um, wild edibles, as well as remedies, medical remedies. I also picked up this book, Reader's Digest New Fix-It-Yourself Manual. Now this book is outdated. Um, it is, I'm going to look at the date, sorry about that. I'm trying to find the date in it. Looks like the 90s, 96? Yeah, so this is 1996. So obviously this has outdated technology in it. Um, you know, it shows you how to fix things like your sink, bicycles, um, telephones, like old, you know, old landline telephones. But the point is, if we are in a grid down situation, um, maybe all you can find is older objects, older appliances. Like, he, you know, here's various appliances like blenders and frying pans and small appliance, small engines, that sort of thing. And so, you know, what you may encounter is not the latest and the greatest. It may be something old that you have to get working again. And so it's good to have a book like this that shows you how to do basic repair. Like here's, you know, how to reupholster a chair. Not that I'm going to be doing a lot of reupholstering. Um, how to, you know, reseat a chair with cane. All that sort of thing. So kind of useful for just having a basic how to repair manual for older objects. I also picked up this road atlas. So uh, those of you who have been paying attention, there was a bit of a situation in Virginia and on the East Coast a couple of weeks ago where um, thousands of motorists were stranded on I-95 up to 48 hours, I believe. They were um, just couldn't get off the road, too much snow and ice and uh, too many traffic incidents. And ha ahead of them, semis that had hit each other and, and stacked up and they just couldn't get through. So there were people out there in the cold in their cars for 48 hours without food or water, which is insane. So I'm trying to up my car preps, making sure that I've got um, extra clothing, warm blankets, food and water. But along those lines, when I'm just kind of reviewing my car preps in general, I wanted to make sure I have things like jumper cables and um, atlases. So I did pick up this atlas. This is a 2018 atlas. I don't think a whole lot of changes have happened in the major roadways since 2018. Uh, it was $7.99, which is, so the, the uh, original price was $19.95, and I got it for $7.99. And just a great atlas. Rand, Mc, Rand McNally is the standard for atlases, road atlases, and um, it's a really great thing to have in your car. All right, two more books that I picked up, and then we'll talk about some other things. So uh, I have a lot of playing cards, board games, dice, things like that. Uh, pick up some playing cards. They're like 88 cents at Walmart. So I have a lot of sets of playing cards because some games that we play, like uh, Smear, I think take five or six um, packs of cards. So they're also good trade items. So we have a lot of cards, but I, you know, we know the games that we play all the time, like Smear and Sevens and Hand and Foot and... Um, different games like euchre things like that but it's always good to learn new games especially if you're in a situation where you're tired of playing the same games and you run out of things to do so for 99 cents i picked up this game or sorry this card book play according to hoyle hoyle's rules of games so it's got bridge rummy um two card poker games that i've never heard of honestly so um just simple little rule book for card games to have as a backup 
when you're tired of playing the same four games that you know. And then kind of a fun book, always good to get a little bit of dystopian fiction, uh, Ray Bradbury, Fahrenheit 451, if you're not familiar with this book, it's a classic. I have read it before. My son has not read it. So for um, 99 cents, I thought it was a good addition to our library, something maybe I can convince him to read. All right, so uh, some of the other things that I found at the thrift stores during my forays the last few days. Let's see here. So, um, in the area of safety and self-defense, I you can look for things like baseball bats, which is kind of crazy, but maybe you're not into firearms. Um, I just actually purchased my first firearm. So up to that point, I had things like mace and um, I have a machete and I had a baseball bat by my bed. And so if you're kind of starting out and you're looking for some general all-purpose home defense um, that's not gun related, you might consider picking up an old baseball bat. Um, the one I have was from my son, but you could find baseball bats at Goodwill all the time. You also want to look for things like, um, well, at the ReStore, you can find things like sheets of plywood and two by fours. And of course, you want to you know, have those backed up so that you can put them over your windows or doorways if you need to board up, protect your home. So it's always good to have pieces of plywood cut to the size of your windows pre-cut. Also, um, three inch screws or nails to fix those sheets of plywood to the window frame or door frame. So check out those. Um, let's see here. What else did I find? I did remember. I did see an ammo box at the Goodwill, but it was more than I wanted to pay for. It was an antique box, so I didn't get it. I did pick up some PPE. <coughs> Excuse me. We all know the term PPE now, right? So I did pick up this pair of um, um, goggles. Sorry swimming goggles, right? Uh, $2.99, brand new, still in the package. And these are just a nice thing to throw in your car, in your bug out bag, in your get home bag, because if you were to encounter a situation where there are chemicals in the air, you know, if it's nuclear fallout, you're screwed. But if it's something like, um, you know, civil unrest and there's tear gas being deployed, this is something that it's good to have you know, several pairs of these here and there so that you have some protection. So I did pick that up for $2.99. Um, I also picked up, let's see here. So I always look at the home goods, like the, the cooking and food prep, that sort of thing. Um, what I ended up finding this time were these single wall metal water bottles. So these are a really great thing to have um, in your bug out bag and that sort of thing because you can fill it with water <laughs> Excuse me, and then you can actually just put the bottle with the cap off put the bottle in the fire or over the fire and Boil the water in the bottle itself now so many water bottles that are made nowadays are the double walled metal water bottles and so It's really good to have a bunch of the single walled uh, water bottles around these were a dollar ninety nine each and um, I'll probably well we're actually so here's the situation we live on a, we have a quarter acre and we have a well and our well water is pretty atrocious it is um, very iron heavy and my son will not drink it uh, so we get bottled water bottles of water and that's pretty much what he drinks <coughs> excuse me I will take a bottle of water after I have finished it, refill it from the tap, and then put like a sugar-free flavoring in it and put it in the fridge and it's doable, but it's still pretty gross water. So I actually purchased a travel Berkey recently, which I'll talk about in another video. And um, the idea is that we can not just filter water from our cistern or our water or our rain barrels, but also from our tap as well and hopefully get a better tasting drinking water. So instead of using all these plastic bottles, which I hate seeing all these plastic water bottles that we're using, we can um, use reusable metal bottles. So if you're carrying water with you day to day anyways, which a lot of people nowadays carry a bottle of water with them, um, I would recommend actually uh, carrying a metal water bottle over a plastic or um, water bottle, excuse me, because you do have the ability to boil water in a single walled metal water bottle. Do not purchase double walled um, water bottles and try to heat water because the, the layer of air trapped between the two pieces of metal um, can do bad things. <laughs> I don't know the whole physics of it, but it's not good to boil water in a double walled uh, water bottle. So I did pick up two of those. Whoops. Uh, I also have been looking for some, some cold weather gear. My son being 12 does not like to wear a coat. 
I think it's a kid thing. Um, at this point, I kind of just let him do his thing. I figure he'll learn his lesson if he's cold. But on that note, I still need to have gear for him, um, maybe especially in the car if we're traveling because maybe all he's wearing is a hoodie and maybe it's 25 degrees outside. And if we were to be stranded on the side of the road like they were in Virginia, um, a hoodie is not going to cut it for 48 hours. So I am trying to stock up on some cold weather gear. I picked up this pair of gloves, insulated gloves, thermo soft gloves for $1.99. And I did look them up online. I can't remember exactly how much they were, but you know, throw, run, run these through the washing machine, get them nice and hot, clean them up. Um, they're actually in really good condition. They fit my hands. They will fit my son's hands. We are about the same size. And so these are something that I'm probably going to keep in the car um, so that we have some warm gear if needed. I also picked up this fleece jacket here. It's a pretty good fleece jacket um, for, it says $3.99, but it was 50% off. So I got this for a buck, two bucks, sorry, I can't do my math, two bucks. Uh, so two bucks, nice fleece jacket. It fits my son, um, probably would actually fit me. What is it? It's a large, yeah, it's probably fit both of us. Again, a little bit warmer than a hoodie. If you put it over a hoodie, which is what my son generally wears, it's gonna give him an added layer of warmth. So something that I can wash, throw in the car, and have if need be. And for two bucks, you can't really beat that. I did purchase a grill. I purchased a propane grill um, because I have tried to work with charcoal before and it's a pain in the butt. But I'm also trying to learn how to cook over an open flame. I'm the director of a um, museum, a history museum, an 1808 log tavern building, and we do have working fireplaces. And one of the things I want to do at the museum is have classes on open fire cooking. So I am trying to improve those skills, both grilling and open fire cooking. So I did pick up this grill pan um, for roasting veggies and that sort of thing. $3.99 at Goodwill. It's got a folding handle. And then I picked up a cast iron pan. Now this pan wasn't a super good deal, honestly. $7.99. It's Pioneer Woman, which is a brand sold at Walmart. It comes, this set, or this is part of a three-piece set that was about $39 I think when I looked it up and this is a small pan. I do have a cast iron Dutch oven that I got for Christmas that I have not used yet but I thought a good way to start was just like frying up a couple of eggs on the stove top and how you see how cast iron um, performs. So I picked this up for $7.99 like I said probably a little more than I should have spent. You can get them in the store for maybe like a couple two or three bucks more but it's in brand new condition, so we're gonna try to learn how to use cast iron, cook with cast iron. All right, another kitchen utensil, this bad boy. This is a meat chopper, a meat grinder, and I took it apart, all the parts are there. Um, it has a little bit of um, corrosion on it, so I'll have to scour that and clean that up, but this is an industrial size vintage meat grinder with clamps on your countertop or whatever. Um, it's heavy. So this was $8 and I got it, oh, I think it was 50% off too. And these sell, I looked online, there was one that was selling for $99, which is insane. Um, but most of them are like in the 40 to $50 range. So pretty good deal on this. And I've been wanting a meat grinder. That's one of the holes in my preps that I've been looking for. So this one will do the job. Okay, what else did I find? All right, so when you are at thrift stores, you should check out lanterns and flashlights and electrical equipment, especially battery powered electrical equipment. Some of the flashlights are kind of iffy. I did find this um, battery powered, sorry, not battery powered, rechargeable lantern. It is Eddie Bauer. It was $4.99 um, and I was like, I hope this works. If it doesn't work, I will, you can take it back. So the thing about Goodwill is you can take stuff back within seven days with the receipt as long as the tag is still on it. Um, there are some exceptions, like you can't take books back. But anyways, I thought, well, I will get it and I will see if it works. And if not, I will take it back and get store credit because you can only get store credit. So unfortunately, I got it home and I realized that um, I didn't have any chargers at home to charge it. <laughs> it has a USB outlet here and I had, you know, USB to C and, and, and that sort of thing. And I didn't have anything like USB to USB. So I had to buy a charger online, but I needed one anyways. So I charged it up and it works. 
So we got a radio on it. Um, we have the the light, which now I can't see. Oh, there's a button. So light. And then also it has an alarm. Ready? <coughs> Crazy. Uh, it also, so not only is it rechargeable, it also is prank charge. So even if I don't have a way to charge it electrically, electron, electrically, I can hand charge it. So um, that's kind of an exciting purchase for $4.99. I'm not sure what it retails for, but a good little prep to have. All right. So I found this. This is crazy. I was talking about lanterns and flashlights. You should also look for oil lamps. And I found for $1.99 this little pair of miniature oil lamps. And you're gonna laugh at me because it's kind of ridiculous. Look at this, look how cute this is. There's two of them. At first I thought maybe they were salt and pepper shakers because why would you want an oil lamp this tiny? But they're legit oil lamps. There are wicks in them. I'll get closer here so you can see. There's a reflector, there's a glass base. You unscrew the base, you put your oil in there. I do have a couple of larger lanterns, but I thought these were just too cute to pass up. Probably not very practical, um, but eh. Fuck 99. Okay, I also picked up this basket. Um, I have a lot of baskets. I like the way they look. They're practical. Um, I have a lot of picnic baskets that have the lids on them. You can store stuff away, whether it's your yarn and, and knitting needles or books or linens, whatever papers from your office so I have a lot of picnic baskets and I like baskets also for going out to the garden um, you just grab a basket anytime you go out there to water because you're always gonna find something to pick right there's always peas or beans or tomatoes or something to pick so it's good to have a little basket this basket was pretty sturdy I think it's cute so I'll use it inside to store various things um, until I need it so this was $3.99 a little more than I would like to spend but it's a nice sturdy little basket for $3.99 I also found at the ReStore this bucket. This is a food grade bucket. Uh, it was marked at a dollar, but it was 50, no, 75% off, 25% off, excuse me, 25% off, so it was 75 cents. So a bucket for 75 cents. And I haven't cleaned it. It's not a bad condition. I probably could clean it and use it for food storage <clears throat> with a lid, but you also can use it for things like a bucket toilet. Um, or moving ashes or harvesting things from your garden or any there's a bazillion purposes that a bucket can serve so you cannot beat 75 cents for a food grade bucket all right on the topic of sanitation I always check out um, you know buckets and things like that but look what I found for $4.99 I found a washboard I actually have another washboard that I picked up used someplace um, and you don't see these a whole lot but $4.99 is a pretty good deal for a legit washboard so grid down situation you are washing your clothes by hand you can use the bucket plunger system which you might have read about um, and I do have or I'm working on that system but it's always good to have an old-fashioned washboard now, along those lines, one of the things that I have had on my prep list for a while is a mop ringer. So when you're mopping floors with the old-fashioned string mop, they have buckets that have rollers on them that will squeeze the water out of the mop. So a bucket like that is useful for mopping, but it's also useful for doing laundry. After you have washed your clothes, you put the clothes through the wringer and it squeezes out the majority of the water. Then you can hang the clothes outside on the clothesline. So um, I've had that on my wish list, not thinking I would actually find one. I found one. Here it is. Look at this. Oops, sorry. $20, 50% off, $10 for the bucket ringer. It works. It's in good condition. It actually has a pedal down here. It's foot activated. So it, the, when you do that, I'll show you here. So good for my old fashioned string mop, but also for doing laundry. And worst case scenario, you just have a nice galvanized bucket. Okay, couple more things here that I have found in the last couple of days. So I did find this um, tool, I believe it's called a scythe, scythe? 
I'm really bad at pronouncing words. I read a lot and so sometimes I read a word and I say it wrong in my head and when I try to say it out loud it doesn't come out right. So that's a problem. But anyways, old fashioned tool for harvesting grains, wheats, cutting vegetation, that sort of thing. This one's dull. It definitely needs to be sharpened, but I have um, a whetstone and files and things like that so I can sharpen it. It is older. Um, it's pretty sturdy. The handle's pretty sturdy. It was marked at $3, but it was 50% off, so I got it for $1.50. So just a good tool to have. Um, I do actually want to try growing my own grains. Right now I um, make acorn flour and I want to try doing a little bit other types of grains so I can produce other types of flowers. So it was good to pick that up for buck fifty. And the final thing that I picked up in my last foray into the thrift store was this hand tool. This is a um, a drill or an auger. You put a drill bit in here. It's adjustable, and then you can drill a hole. Obviously, when the power is out and you need a drill electric drill is not going to cut it. You can have a rechargeable battery situation, use a generator, that sort of thing. But I tend to rely more on the old fashioned tools. Um, I like to have those on hand. So I will probably actually use this for drilling holes um, to tap walnut trees for syrup. So this is something that I want to try this year. Tapping walnut trees, I already harvest walnuts um, for the nut meat, but I want to try my hand at wal at black walnut syrup. So I did get a black walnut syrup kit to start with, and it has a drill bit that fits the spiles. Um, but I thought, you know, hauling my drill, I actually have a cord corded drill. So I have a cordless drill too. It's very weak, but I also have a corded drill. And so I thought this might be a good way to wander around in the woods tapping the trees without having to haul um, a battery powered or corded drill around. Obviously a corded drill would not work, um, but the battery powered drill, like I said, does not keep it charged for very long. So this is a good way to do that. So those are some of the homesteading and prepping related items that I have found recently at thrift stores. I just wanted to kind of touch on some other things that I, uh, I saw that I didn't pick up. I saw things like other, you know, hand tools, mallets, screwdrivers, wrenches, hammers, uh, step ladders, um, obviously buckets, tarps, things like that, saws and shovels. I have most of that stuff, but if you're just starting out trying to build your tool supplies, that might be a good place. Um, you can find a lot of that stuff at the ReStore, a lot. Uh, like I said, I already have most of those tools, but if you're just starting out and you just need something, go there. Oh, I forgot one more thing that I did find. I found a 10 foot length of three quarter inch PVC pipe at the ReStore for $2. I think it retails for like five or six bucks. And I actually am in the process of building hoops over my raised garden beds. I am going to have those um, covered with plastic or netting so that I can protect my plants both from the weather and from insects and birds. So this is something I'm trying this year. Last year, my uh, cabbage and cauliflower and broccoli were hit pretty hard by cabbage moths. And I wanna try some netting over my cabbage this year and hopefully um, can keep them away. Also, I want to try maybe starting some seeds a little bit earlier in the season outside, like greens. And I thought having plastic over those hoops would be a good way to start. So I picked up a 10 foot piece of PVC pipe for $2, which is a pretty good deal. Let's see here, anything else I wanted to talk about? Oh, yes, something else I did not buy this time, but I have purchased in the past is medical equipment. You will always find medical equipment um, at thrift stores. And when I say medical equipment, I mean things like walkers, canes, crutches, walking boots, um, raised toilets, um, absorbent pads, like, or somebody has opened up a package and taken out an adult diaper or an absorbent pad and then gotten rid of them. So a lot of times older people will have that type of equipment and then they pass away and their loved ones have no use for it. So it goes to the thrift store. So, um, 
we already have a set of crutches and some splints and some walking boots and stuff like that. Um, I don't have a whole lot of room for some of the bigger equipment, but you should definitely check out the medical equipment. If you don't have at least a set of crutches in your preps, that's a hole you need to fill. So there's a lot of ideas out there, a lot of great things that you can find um, to prep on a dime. I, like I said, I'm a single mom. I don't always have a lot of expendable income. And so I always check out the thrift stores for all sorts of things, but specifically for or homesteading and prepping related gear. So if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.